Relative Times Sports Editor Chris Corman here, joined by Dustin Opiark, Indiana beat writer, uh, Sunday night following Indiana's surprising loss to Iowa uh, on NFL championship weekend, sort of a game, I don't know, a little bit lost within the uh, yeah within the, the Indiana sports realm. The, the fervor surrounding the Colts, a uh, late mm-hmm. arriving crowd, and, um, turned out to be a early leaving crowd too. Yeah, as Indiana. Didn't uh, really arrive. Yeah, the Hoosiers never arrived. Mm. Uh, surprising, I, I thought, D, uh, mm. given the way Indiana had played and, and seemed to have some momentum going and, and sort of returned to that. Uh, you know, hey, this is a basketball team that's understanding and growing and yeah. um, getting some energy, getting some spark, figuring out how it wants to play. and mm. uh, Just a drastic step back, I think. Um, yeah. You know, certainly still... Saw some of the youth come out and so, some of that, but but really, as Tom Crean said, uh, you know, I think his quote was, "This had everything to do with us not willing, you know, not willing to be in a fight." Yeah, no, they were they were out tough. There's there's no question about it. I mean, they just did not. They got absolutely destroyed on the backboards, thirty nine to twenty three, and basically every number you know that's kind of associated with that. Iowa dominated. I think it was thirty four to sixteen in points in the paint, twenty to seven in second chance points. Uh, they they just got killed on the glass and and. It was interesting. I was not a team that's very tall. There are not a lot of six ten guys, but I mean, you know, they look like football players. You know, they're not. Uh, you know, they're a bunch of six five guys that are pretty much jacked, and they pushed, you know, pushed Watford around a lot, pushed everybody else around. And these guys just got killed on the backboards, and it was, uh, it was interesting to see that they, they didn't respond to that. I mean, Indiana had responded in re, you know in, in recent games. Basically, whenever they were down, they you know they fought back, and they're just as Kareem said repeatedly over and over again. There was not a lot of fight tonight. They just did. They never got it going. Um, and uh, one thing he also pointed out was it wasn't even just the rebounding; it was also the screening on offense. Right. Uh, you know, they and which is a big reason why they couldn't get anything going. I mean, they had no looks at all. They couldn't drive the ball to the basket. They couldn't uh, get any open looks. And a big reason was because they weren't screening anybody. You know, they, you know, it was just take it. You know take it on three or four people or take a contested shot and that wasn't going to work. I mean, they, right. they didn't do anything screening-wise that, that opened things up. And, that, and that's another toughness thing. I mean, it, mm. was, it was purely a, a lazy effort from Indiana tonight, I think. Yeah. And, and, you know, you said they didn't respond. And I don't know. I mean, I think everybody is still wondering this and we've talked about it on mm. on Scoop Talk before and in stories and blog posts and everything we read elsewhere, you know, people are wondering, okay, is Indiana ever going to be this Big Ten team that's going to try to grind it out? Are they going to get this big man who who can change a game by being a force in the post? And I don't know if that's ever going to happen. But I also also think, you know, it's pretty clear that Crean wants his team to be up-tempo and, and, Mm. uh, you know, be free-flowing and and score that way. And Indiana never really seemed to try to dictate it that way either. No, it wasn't wasn't that, you know, being out-toughed is one thing, but basketball team can then be more savvy you know right. which is certainly what i think anyone who was looking toward this matchup mm. thought would happen uh right. you, know, you, you think with the rivers and and jones and uh you know watford as you mentioned they're not as thick they're not mm. big tough guys but you know you, you expect them to win with skill with creativity with uh yeah w- what they have more of than i Right, and and that never happened, which I, no. I think is disconcerting for for anyone watching this. Yeah, team. No, I mean a, a lot was disconcerting. I mean, it's again, it's tough to put this in perspective because you just look, you know saw them play so much better in the last two games. I mean, you know they're capable of it. You know they have done it before. It's just a question of okay, how could this team be in a situation where it could do something like this at home? I mean, you've right. seen it on the road, and they had started to kind of get rid of you know those I guess road jitters or whatever it is you call it the reason that, you know, teams don't play well in the road. But, I mean, they've seemed, seemed to get to get over that at Penn State that all of a sudden they don't bring the same energy that they always had uh, into Assembly Hall up to this point, uh, really. And it, it just it just wasn't there tonight. It's, it's disconcerting. I don't know if it uh, necessarily means that this team is broken or whatnot, but it's, no. it, it's, it was tough to figure out where, where does right. this come from, really, when you've had these sort of performances and you've had in the past couple of right. weeks. I think we should definitely mention that Crean immediately uh, mm-hmm. sort of knocked away the – convenience storyline that Indiana overlooked Iowa. Right. I think they did. I think it's clear that that, that was a, po- I, I, a a portion of it that mm, uh, yeah. this team was was because I mean, it's it's a new experience. Yeah. It's just like everything, you know, going on the road mm. to this arena for a freshman is a new experience. Well, these freshmen, it's a new experience to be favored in a Big Ten game. To be an Indiana player favored in a in a Big Ten mm. game. Did there be a game that they were expected to win? Right. That you know, 
they weren't trying to get up for somebody that they knew was considered better than them. They were, you know, trying to get up for a team that everybody figured right. they were better than. But it's also, it's also, I think we must mention that Crean did not, you know, he specifically said multiple times in the press conference that he was not blaming this on youth on and youth. experience, which, yes. mm. uh, you know, not necessarily a first, but uh, certainly, a first, certainly something mm. that Crean. Uh, a lot of his detractors have said is, you know, mm. how long is he going to trot out that excuse? Yeah. How long will he be given that excuse, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, to explain, uh, the explain why they lose a the game? Right. Yeah. And so I think, it, you know, as, as I wrote in my column, I thought that it was a little turning point. You know, Crean still oh, brought up was. that, hey, we it need to get stronger, was. we need to develop, we need to bring in recruits, but mm. uh, it was not the sole focus. Uh, it really turned, right. you know. Well, he knew they were capable of it. Today. Right. And I, and, and I think for, that was probably, I guess, the first time that he – I think there may have been one or two games that would, I would, I guess, point to the Loyola game uh, earlier this season. I was kind of surprised he didn't call him out for it. But this one was the first time where he was like, okay, look, I, I know I can't get away with the youth, youth excuse here. Everybody expected you know, this team to win this game, and you can only blame it on that to such a degree. Such a degree. This, this team lost because it wasn't tough enough tonight. Right. And it, it was a turning point for him to kind of recognize, all right, I, I, I can't go back to this well today. Right. Let's talk about Derek Elston, who's a player that uh – Everyone seems to be talking about uh, mm-hmm. most mo- most people saying why isn't he playing more, including right. Tom Crean. Uh, yeah, it was two oh, yeah. radio shows ago. I mean, mm-hmm. this was he said, "I got to get Derek Elston more minutes. I got to." Yeah. And Elston comes in and you know gets an offensive board, gets a basket, then hits a deep two mm-hmm. uh, right over here, I think. Um, yeah. And then ended up only playing nine minutes. Now, obviously, mm-hmm. he has defensive deficiencies. Uh, yeah. And, you know, maybe and and. He might have been one of the guys not setting the picks that, that Kareem wanted to. You know, we right. have to go back and really study Watch the film, the film to see to see exactly. But uh, is he being used correctly? Does he need to see more time to develop? What What's your read on Derek Elston right it's, now? It's hard to figure. I think uh, you know one thing Kareem did point out that would obviously change the game significantly for Derek Elston uh, is he said it. This might be the end of the three guard lineup. Right. Uh, went back to that. Said, okay, what, what do you mean by that? Indiana got two rebounds from its guards tonight. Yeah. Total, to, total to point, the, the entire game. To point that out, that hasn't been the case the entire. Game. Oh right, you know, They've Rivers has, decent, has yeah. rebounded really well for a guard. Um, Verdell Jones has rebounded reasonably well. I mean, they're six five guys, so they should rebound well for guards. But uh, this this was particularly bad tonight. Uh, but you know, as, as he pointed out, this might be the end of the three guard lineup. There's a chance that you know, and, and obviously the end of a three guard lineup would definitely, almost definitely mean Watford at the three, Elson at the four, and either Pritchard, Cap, or Bianco, or you know, maybe Tijon first spurts at the five. So, you know, went back to that, and he was like, well, I didn't say I'm never going to use it again, but you know, maybe I won't start it. I mean, he wasn't really, uh, you know, direct or whatnot in explaining exactly how he was going to do it. But basically what I th- it He's means, always direct with what he, telling yeah, us what he wants to do this time, Particularly when I ask questions. <laughs> um, anyway, point being, so if, if they go to that, start that three forward lineup, you're obviously going to see more Derek Elson. You'd have to. Uh, so that that could make a difference. It's tough to tell exactly. I guess, you know, one issue is he, he's not thick enough to be a five, and clearly, you know, Watford is your four. So where and when do you play Derek Elston? I guess especially because Watford has, has become such a go-to guy uh, inside. He's really developed, especially the last you right. know couple weeks. He, you know, he, he's definitely stepped up his right. game a lot. So it's like, okay, do you take minutes away from? From Watford, you know, that's a tough question. I'm, I'm going to express my opinion here because I'm Go allowed ahead. to. I'm a columnist. You are the sports editor. Well, I'm more than that, I'm the columnist. You are also the columnist. Editors don't have opinions. They just okay. deal with you guys. Uh, but, but my opinion, I, Elston and I watched him a lot in, mm. in AU a little bit. Uh, he mm. was injured and didn't get to go on the AU circuit uh, between mm. after his junior year. Uh, but then we did watch him a lot in uh, Indiana All-Stars and, and really sort mm. of was able to, to observe him. He played in, in 2 a uh, he was bigger than everybody. He sort of got away with a lot of things. And I right. think right now he's a kid who really needs to play to understand what this level takes. And I mm-hmm. think it's time for that to happen. Uh, you know, Indiana technically could make a run to getting to 500, yeah. play in some sort of postseason tournament, mm-hmm. get that experience. I think that experience would be great. But I think mm-hmm. right now it's better for Indiana to play a guy like Elston, let, let him play through the defense deficiencies, learn the hard way. Right. Same thing with Bawa, maybe. You know, you got to you, – I mean, I yeah, think Green needs been... to figure out if these guys are his guys, uh, if, if they're the ones who are going to carry the program forward and – Mm-hmm. Or if they're not, and I, yeah. you know, I think it's that time where you're going to turn that corner. Maybe see a little bit less of Devin Dumas, and, mm-hmm. and see a little bit more of those guys, and trying to figure out who they are. Yeah, but, uh, that's. Uh, we'll just have to watch and see, mm-hmm. which we will do. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully, we will see you on the uh, the scoop and Hoosiers HQ. 
and I don't know, maybe the mall or somewhere else. Oh, there's not a game for a week. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what we're going to do. Figure something out. We'll see you. Take care.